Hello and good morning. I welcome you all in our today's session. Today we will continue our lecture. As you can see on the screen, we are going to talk about the influence of Chomsky. The influence of Chomsky, uh, especially the Chomsky's theory of transformative generative power, or generative transformational model, that we can say. How actually it has influenced uh, the other uh, academicians, especially in the field of translation studies, and how they feel or how they got influenced by Chomsky's uh, this transformative generative grammar or this model. We'll be looking at that, that thing today in the discussion. And especially Nida and some other uh, academicians that they worked on this, and they used these uh, Chomsky's, uh, Chomsky's this transformative generative model to uh, explain the very idea of translation, or to define translation and also to find out the pros and cons of the translation, translation work. So here, as you can see on this screen, uh, it says that Chomsky's generative transformational model analysis, analysis, uh, analyzes sentences into a series of related levels that are run by groups. In very simplified form, the key features of this model can be summarized as follows. Now, uh, without going too deep into this, I mean, this discussion about these transformational generative or this generative transformational model, I'd like to just give you a very basic idea about the DB structure and the surface structure, so that it helps you to understand that what does it mean and how actually it has become a part of the translational studies. Then you can get a very clear picture picture of this thing. Now. Uh, I hope that in your linguistic introduction to linguistics, you have already come to know about the surface structure and deep structure. So if I ask you the questions, is there anyone who can tell me, what is your understanding of deep, deep structure and surface, surface structure? Can you tell me, anyone? Fine. Any idea about deep structure and surface structure? Shramin, can you tell me? Shramin, can you hear me? Shramin, can you hear me? Yes, Shramin, I'm asking you. Yes, I can hear you. That's right. So are you familiar with this term, the deep structure and surface structure? That was, I mean, these two were introduced by Chomsky. No, sir. Okay, no problem. No problem. I'm, I'm not introduced. Okay, no problem. But I, I will make it simple for you. The structure, you understand what does it mean, a structure? I mean, usually by structure, uh, we can say it can be defined as uh, like, uh, I mean, a set of relations on a, uh, on a linear sequence of units, okay? such as the criteria uh, can be defined that when the structure has been completed. So when you just take a look at the structure, and you can you can see that it's a it's a really linear sequence of units. For example, in a sentence, if we take a sentence, then what do we have in a sentence? Okay, in in a sentence we have words, we have uh, and these words are classified into different kinds of words like content words, or uh, you can say uh, also the functional words, and uh, you can also say I mean you know, according to person speech you can also define them, and also. Uh, in different other ways, actually, you can see the also the grammatical connection between words like subject, verb, uh, uh, complement, different other stuff. So all these things together, they create a kind of linear sequence of units. Units means words, and the, you can see the classification of the words and their function and the functions of the words in the sentence. So these are the linear kind of uh, you can say uh, things, and that is the structure. Then. Chomsky came up with this idea, with the analysis of sentence, that is surface and deep, deep structure. And according to Chomsky, I mean, he says that the, the surface structure is actually produced, uh, actually produces structure. So uh, the surface structure is the actual production of the language, okay? The, the, which it refers to a sentence as it is uh, pronounced or written. That is the surface structure. So uh, for example, I'm just talking to you so you can hear me. So that is the production of the, uh, I mean the sentence, uh, or you can see the word. So 
or the structure. So that is the surface system. But on the other hand, the deepest structure is the abstract structure that allows the native speaker of language to know uh, what the, uh, uh, to know, I mean, what the sentence means. So you can see that with the deep structure, we can see that there is an abstract structure. Uh, you can see the abstract uh, secrets of units is there. Though actually we are not all the time conscious about those deep structure, but it, it, it comes automatically because since we are the native speaker. For example, we are the native speaker of Bangla, and also we are the native speakers of, uh, and those who are the native speakers of English, so it comes automatically to them. And also for Bangla, it comes automatically to us this deep structure. That, that is the abstract form or the abstract structure of sentence. And you can see that it, it is related, the structure is related with the meaning. And on the other hand, you can see the surface structure is related with the, uh, it is related with, you can say, the, I mean, the phonetic, uh, phonetic production or the sound, it is related with the sound. So that is the phonetic form, okay? So the surface structure is the actual production or the actual utterance that I'm talking to you now. And deep structure is the structure that is beneath the surface structure. That means the actual structure, you can say. For example, uh, the subject of agreement, or you can say uh, like, uh, uh, or because the parts of speech and also the content meaning or the functional meaning of the word. So all these things together, you can call them the deep structure. So deep structure will analyze the sentence. Now, here you can see, so there is a relation between these surface structure and the deep structure. Because the transformational uh, functions, uh, I mean, it, it works as a link between the deep structure and the surface structure. I can give you an example. Here is a sentence. Listen to me very carefully. If you don't understand me, then just ask me, then I'll repeat it. Okay? Can you hear me? Okay, sir. You okay, sir. What I'm okay, excellent. Now, listen to this sentence. The sentence is. So the same sentence, then we'll try to analyze it in two different ways. First one is, visiting doctors can be nuisance. Visiting doctors can be nuisance. Uh, do you get what I'm saying? Visiting doctors can be nuisance. Understood what I'm saying? Amanda, can you hear me? You follow me, Amanda, what I'm saying? Yeah, are you with us? Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, Tanzir. Sir, what did you say? Visiting doctors can be... Visiting doctors can be nuisance. Nuisance in Bengali, we say, a kind of, uh, I mean, in English, a kind of annoyance, a kind of disturbance. Okay, in Bengali, you call it upotro. Oh, sir, got it. Uh, look at the sentence start. Visiting doctors can be nuisance. What does it mean in Bengali? Who can translate? Visiting doctors can be nuisance. Can you translate it? You can translate it in different ways. And I just want to see that that is the surface structure that we're right now talking about. Translate it as you understand it. Fine, can you give it a try? Just translate the sentence. So, Dr. Deshate, Council Kora, annoying money. Okay, take it. Uh, any other alternative translation? Any other alternative translation? Any other alternative translation? Okay. Anything else? Visiting doctors. Can it be like this? The doctor also visit us. Doctors also visit us. Can't be like this. One is you visit the doctor, that is a nuisance. The other one is doctors visit us and they can be nuisance. 
So you see, the surface structure visiting doctors can be a nuisance, but the exact mean actually is very difficult to. Uh, I mean, from the surface meaning, you can get one meaning and I can get another meaning. But when we go for the deepest structure, then it will help us to understand the, uh, the whole structure of the sentence and also the different levels of meaning, semantic meaning. That, that it, I mean, you can see that that's the job of the deeper structure to analyze the semantic. So we will get that semantics out of it. For example, visiting doctor, that means doctor visits us, or you visit doctor, okay? So we visit doctors, it can be reasons. That is one, that, that can be the one explanation. Another one is doctors visit us, they can be reasons. So in Bengali, I can say, Amra doctor ke dekhte jai, eta birokti pa. Arekto ke pare, doctor amadar ke dekhte ashen, Visiting doctors. specific Doctor visit doctor visit. visiting doctors means visiting to adjective is a bit of an option. Doctor to modify. doctor of a depression. visiting My visiting doctors can be nuisance. Or our visiting doctors can be nuisance. Take it a subject to one choice. Subject is understood. Visiting doctors, when a doctor can take the job, a doctor should attack a doctor. Do you mean Ashta Parana? Mr. Do the adjective issue with the doctor to the functional meaning to other words? Are you our visiting take a bar bishop in the talking about meaning with that city? Only two casting. I mean, it was a part of it. Yes, sir. Now it's clear. Even our people, translation of Junuki, E. I get a talk to me. I can take a pull on over Korean. Lego did a mean for me. I'm a careful of now, but deeper structure from Boka. I don't have any clear idea, and also the surface structure I'm confused by the surface structure. Then there is a possibility that the meaning or the translation into a different language, other language, or the target language, it can be a kind of misinterpretation and mistranslation, right? Right, so exactly. So that's where actually they found that these. I mean, Chomsky's degenerative transformational model is very much important for translation to understand the I mean, mechanics of translation. Okay, now I will jump to the next slide. Now here you can see it says that the structure relations described in this model are held by Chomsky to be a universal feature of human life. Obviously, this is a universal feature of human life. It's also true for us and also true for the other language, speakers of the other language. <clears throat> the most basic of such structures are carnal sentences, which are simple, active, declarative sentences that require the minimum, minimum of transformation or minimum transformation. Sorry, minimum transformation. So the most basic such structures are carnal sentences. Carnal sentences means the basic sentence structure, okay? Like simple sentence, active sentence, and declarative sentences. Simple sentences, for example, I say that visiting doctors can be nuisance. It's a very simple sentence, and that is pretty active sentence. Because we haven't just it like this that uh, visiting doctors uh, or uh, doctors visited by me can be a nuisance. So it, that is a passive form. So we didn't do any passive form. The simple form is the active form, another you know, declarative sentences. Uh, or we can also say the assertive sentences. So these are the very simple form of the sentences. And that is the surface or surface structure. Okay. Now, next is. There is a next slide to say that neither incorporates key features of Chomsky's model into his science of translation. So you see that neither actually she introduced Chomsky's idea. He introduced Chomsky's idea. <coughs> I mean, here in this, uh, you can see that while actually he, here you can see the science of translation, while actually he was introducing this, then he actually brought this idea, uh, Chomsky's this, uh, the transformational generative grammar. Or, uh, generative transformational model. Actually, he brought these things into the uh, explanation of the science of translation. So in particular, Nader sees that it provides a translator with a technique of decoding the sent, uh, um, source text and the procedure for encoding the target text. Absolutely, because I already have understood that what is surface structure and deep structure. So you can see that to analyze the source text, decoding the source text, that means to analyze the source text is important. Because sometimes maybe we might get confused by the source text and its structure. 
or it's, I mean, the semantic, uh, you can say the intricacy. So we might be confused by that. We might, we might feel intrigued. So what uh, this will help us, I mean, these, uh, a basic knowledge about this transformative generative grammar, this model, about this model, if you have the general knowledge, then it will help us to analyze the text, the source text, and also we can translate it, uh, I mean, into the target text properly. So that's how you see that decoding the source text and encoding the target text. So decoding means to analyze the meaning of the source text and to encode means to get that meaning and to, to you can say, to transfer that meaning into the target. For example, I'm going to use the text in the text that can be decoded for them, decoded for them, bring it to the fella, or that can be decoded for them, bring it in them, or to the dealer, shed on you, I'm going to have a transfer, I'm going to have a column, transmit column, I'm a target text, a bundle. So there are going to be English text of Bojak Chistopulam, should a Kami Chomsky model that I have for a Jacanat Kiki to Rami Tikta for Bujiniba, Bujiniba for a Shetami Bangla, but we should shot it meaning to give a vote. বাংলার জন্য অর্থটা বের করছো Although the reverse is Chomsky's model when analyzing the uh, surface structure. Now, thus, the surface structure of the source text is analyzed into basic elements of the deep structure. So, for that, I've already explained that, that in the source text, we will analyze it into the deep structure, the basic elements of the deep structure, or the units, you can say, like words and different kinds of grammatical functions. So, these are the very basic elements of the deep structure. These are transformed in the trans, in the translation process and then we are structured semantically and stylistically into the surface structure of the target text. So we, what actually we have thought, usually what we have seen, that the source text, when it is written, it itself, the whole text itself is a surface, I mean, so that is a surface structure. And then we take the surface structure, that means the, the written form or the oral form, usually actually we're talking about text. So we will take the written text and then that is the surface, surface structure for us as a translator. Then I'll take the text, I'll read it, I'll decode it, analyze it, and then I'll take the semantic, uh, the semantic thing, uh, the semantically and the stylistically, I'll try to understand it and then I will transmit all those ideas. I will transfer all those ideas into the target text. That's it says that we are structured semantically and stylistically. So semantically and stylistically, I will analyze the target text, a uh, source text first, and then I will use that semantics, uh, the semantically and uh, stylistically analyze those of the structure. Then I will trans transmit those things, or I will just transform it and transmit it into the target text. Or that source text, the style of source text, the orthodox, orthodox, Shoyli dictum division of Purbo, Purba for it, Uginista Kami about who just took a book, his surface structure about who wanted the water, Potomanilam surface structure, a source text, Udamajan surface structure, Shedagami deep structure Jabo, meaning Tanibu, near our Shaita Kami, target text of the English Tekami Banga Shetabar, Unuba for Bashan, Pakunu the Java Putsi, Jokonami Purifilbo, Pakunu Java Bangla, Jacob Boraway, as a Pakunu the Banga surface structure. What are the words? Yes, sir. That's connect a process to the deep structure and analyze with some with source text. The English text a come to deep structure is a meaning to provoke text. We meaning to come on over for the ortho to dictate, how to dictate a chick. Even a stylistics features to know share that which is to go to the one that is given as far yet. The whole shake a target text army, one of the provoked. Another that for surface text to surface, surface structure to surface structure, mass connect to the actor process that is deep structure. A deep structure to each other. Source text are analyzed. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
the target text and then you do a structured surface text what is our surface text structure ami rupantorito korchi ba so the process taking analysis transfer and restructure understood yes sir now let's move on to the next slide right here you see need is three stage system of translation now what what he um, says now here you see first you, can you see the screen if you just take a look at the screen then it will help you to understand very easily you can see it right right sir all right now first you see the a and b so a is a source language so we will analyze it then we will transfer it to the and, and then we will after transferring it then we will restructure into the receptor language that means that is the target text so source language is english in our case for example then we will analyze the english text then we will transfer those semantic semantic and semantic and stylistic features so uh, i mean those units or components so the elements then we will transfer those elements and we will restructure them according to bangla language bangla language je bhabe howt chebe shele restructure kore tala paabo pele pele am teacher at the receptor language be tum a hocche tomar source text ar b ta hocche target text a hocche tomar english b hocche bangla mask kono shudhu ei tinta stage amader ke follow korte session er jonno ashlo whether you want it or not whether you are conscious about it or not but it happens automatically this process happens for all the translators automatic analysis transfer restructure that's all okay is it understood okay. okay should i jump to the next slide yes sure sir yeah. now the influence of chomsky again here he says need and tabers own description of the process emphasizes the scientific and practical advantages of this method compared to any attempt to draw up a fully comprehensive list of equivalences between a specific pairs of source language and the target language systems now kernel is a key term in this model so in this model we'll use the kernel that is a, a basic sentence basic structure sentence kernel mane bolte hocche je ekta sentence ta surface level e jerokom dekhabe seta hocche kernel ekta basic structure of the sentence that's it just as kernel sentences were the most basic structures of chomsky's initial model So that is the basic structure of the initial model uh, that was introduced by Chomsky. So for Nida and Taber, kernels are the basic structure means out of which language builds its elaborate surface structures. So Nida and Taber, they they consider it like this: that kernels are the basic uh, structural elements out of which language builds its elaborate surface structures. So uh, simply, what they call it, the data kernel structure, or data surface structure. Another concept is that. Kernel structure of the model, the basic elements, I mean, you can call it subject, verb, object, and there are more, just like adverbials, phrases, so all these things. So each of those, what you call the sentence, the basic elements, will be the surface structure. The kernels are to be obtained from the surface structure, the uh, source text surface structure, by a reductive process of back formation. This entails analysis using generative transformation of grammars, four types of functional elements. Now, Apple, you can only want to do this if we are in at a reductive process, a back formation. Or that, I'm okay. Being a being a short pull up, we can only feel it. Reduce the reductive process. I mean, I would take some keep for it. Yes, sir. But some pull up sentence structure take a being a another pull up. So that pull up source text that surface structure. source text text surface structure on the one hand but the source text and he alike ta we can take a meaning to alike the semantically the actual meaning that i will try to get it and also the stylistic features that i will try to understand and also i'll try to reproduce it and then i'll put it into the target text the total class type for the topic and we should keep an analysis for so that four types of function classes now here we see first of all that is it often but not always proper by verbs so ইভেন্টস কর কি ভার্বস এর মাধ্যমে ইভেন্টস ঘটে অর্থাৎ কি ঘটছে কে ঘটছে ঘটনাটি কিভাবে ঘটছে এটা হচ্ছে ভার্বস এর মাধ্যমে তারপর থাকে অবজেক্টস থাকে কিন্তু উনি বলছেন বাট নট অলওয়েজ পারফর্ম বাই নাউস অ্যাবসলিউটলি তুমি যে নাও নি তোমার অবজেক্টস থাকে তাহলে কি অলওয়েজ অবজেক্টস থাকে আসতে পারে বা নাও নি কি জানেন না বুঝতে পারে অ্যাবস্ট্রাক্ট কি আছে যে আছে কোয়ান্টিটিস এন্ড কোয়ালিটিস ইনক্লুডিং অ্যাডজেকটিভস সো অবজেক্টস এর বিষয়ে বলতে বাট অ্যাডজেকটিভস বা কোন বাচ্চ বা দোষ বাচ্চ শব্দ গুলো আছে Adjective, relation also with the including gender, preposition, so you see that these are the four key ingredients for the component. 
things like verbs, nouns, adjectives, and also gender, prepositions, conjunctions. And they have given it a different names, events, objects, uh, abstracts, and also the relations. But the relations key, uh, he, she, uh, to, on, but, a preposition, sketre, conjunction, say, and, or, but, the negative to show for the corona, sentence below with the connected, is a catch corona. चेस्टा कर Uh, he is my father. So here he, he is your father. So it's a relation. He and father, it is a relation. My father, Tomar Baba. So you can have a gender, your shape, my dear, or Tomar Baba. I'm going to pronounce it. Get at the ashtray. We can now take it from a vegetable and job to the shape of the noun of the baton. Pronoun of the object to the shape of the baton. Good it? So it's just more genius bullet to just go to Jamra. Tom's kid, the basic is such a structure. अनुबादे <laughs> is happens onubad korte gele kintu amader nijeder ajante ei kaj guli ghore jay na amra ki sajoton bhabe na porbo kintu onubad jokhon pori amra jokhon school e thakte sentence bibhinno bangla dite bangla theke ingreji english dite parbo kintu kaj ta kintu etai korechi right ha to amra chomsky ke chintam na bhai ebhabe soft structure deep structure amra tokhon bujhtam na ba hoyto ekhono bhalo bhabe bujhina kintu korte gele kintu amra ei kaj tai korbo right Right, sir. Right. Uh, the next slide is says that examples of analysis designed to illustrate the different constructions with the prepositions of like uh, like surface structure, will of God. You can add a sentence. We just said example here. Back formation like for you see the B object that is good. Perform scale for the study events of wheels. Or that a wheel of the bar. Now I'm going to tell you something. Just one thing. So I'm going to tell you analysis for the will of God. You can. प्रकाश এখন এটা হচ্ছে আমাদের সারফেস স্টার তারপর সারফেস ক্রিয়েশন অফ দা ওয়ার্ল্ড এখন আবারো ব্যাক ফাংশনে যাও দেখো অবজেক্ট কি দা ওয়ার্ল্ড আর কাজটা কি সেটা হচ্ছে ক্রিয়েট সামবডি ক্রিয়েটস টোটাল ইভেন্টটা কি ক্রিয়েশন অর্থাৎ তৈরি করার যে কাজ কি তৈরি করেছে বিশ্ব তৈরি করেছে সেটা হচ্ছে দেখো আবারো দেখো অবজেক্ট প্রেজেন্টেশন সে অফ প্রেজেন্টেশনের অবজেক্ট হিসেবে দা ওয়ার্ল্ড চলে আসে এখানে তার একটা অ্যাডজেক্টিভ হিসেবে ব্যবহৃত হচ্ছে ওয়ার্ল্ড তো হচ্ছে সেটা শুরুতে থাকে স্যার অবজেক্ট So you can see that Amra kiwa be bhenge bhenge component in yaste. So our surface structure take Amra kiwa be bhenge erukom Amra deeply we can think about the key key contact with such something. The relational and even in other components we can uh, classify that we can understand the real world beneath the surface. Nida and Taylor claim that all languages have been have between six and a dozen basic kernel structures and agree for far more. On the level of kernels, then on the level of more elaborate structures. So, on our key question, what are some of the things that we can actually show? How much are we going to be? Try to correct that. Six hundred dozen basic kernel structures between six and a dozen. That try to take a baron more than put the basic idea. That is, put it there. Try to take a baron more than put basic structure. Now, when we get to the basic structure, we show that we have a third subject class verb, second structure subject verb object, fourth structure subject verb complement. দেখো আমরা এরকম করে বললে ধীরে ধীরে দেখবা যে ঘুরে ফিরে এরকম বেসিক ছটা স্ট্রাকচার বা খুব বেশিলে 10 12 টা স্ট্রাকচার কিন্তু ইংরেজি থেকে আমরা দৈনন্দিন ভাষা ব্যবহার করি তো আমাদের ক্ষেত্রে আগে তো এই যে ওনারা খুঁজে বের করেছে যে 
ছয়টা থেকে বারোটার মধ্যে দেখা যায় যে মানুষ ঠিক বানানোর বা সার্ভিস টা চলে আসে প্রত্যেকটা বুঝে গেছে কথাটা यस सर यस सर ओके दैट्स नाउ कार्ल्स ऑफ द लेबल एट व्हिच द मेसेज इज ट्रांसफर्ड इनटू रिसेप्टर लैंगुएज बिफोर बीइंग ट्रांसफर्ड इनटू द सर्फेस स्ट्रक्चर इन थ्री स्टेजेस that that means that kernels of the label at which message is, is transferred into the receptor line so we have already explained the kernel of the basis of the structure that is the basic structure of the source text and in the source text then we have the meaning and that meaning is analyzed that then that is uh, transformed uh, and then that is restructured then we will have it in the target text so that's why he is saying that it's being transferred into three sort of structure uh, so the same thing, the whole process that will be done in the three different states. So what are those three stages? One is literal transfer, minimal transfer, and that is literary transfer. So this is the literal transfer. Literal transfer, and then minimal transfer, and then literary transfer. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. Now, next, what we have? Now, let's see what are those transfer. Now, neither was in favor of two basic uh, orientations or types of. Uh, sorry, that is. Uh, I when I copied it, it, it is there because the form didn't match. So that's it. But anyway, types of equivalence. That is the formal equivalence and dynamic equivalence. Now, here you see just before I go down to this formal and. Uh, uh, dynamic equivalence. Now here you see that literal transfer is. I hope you understand what does it mean literal transfer. In Bengali, we call akuri. We have just one. We have a structure. Take a little bit of akure, akure. I mean, our target text is here. Or that st. Take a tt is here. Just one akuri. Our a translation. What by what? Yeah, what by what? That's what we did. What for? What translation? What do you call it? Matter phrase. Meta frames. Okay, and there is minimal transfer. Minimal transfer means that means uh, uh, you can say, in a sense, that is to some extent abstract. Uh, minimal to budget. The data not only in a reductive process, say we finish that the after that the part of the our the transfer. It is only that we just we just get adaptation. Can you tell us? 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 আরেকটা ট্রান্সলেশন যেটা আছে সেটা ট্রান্সফার যেটা সেটা লিটারালি ট্রান্সফার লিটারালি मींस दैट इज এটাকে তো লিটারাল না লিটারাল হচ্ছে আক্ষরিক আর লিটারারি হোয়াট ডাজ ইট মিন লিটারালি সাহিত্যিক ভাবে অর্থাৎ আমরা যখন কবিতা কিংবা উপন্যাস গল্প যেগুলো যখন আমরা ট্রান্সফার করি অর্থাৎ সেটা একটা সাহিত্য একটা সাহিত্যিক মূল্যমান থাকে আমরা সেই হিসাবে যখন আমরা ট্রান্সফার করি তখন সেটা হচ্ছে লিটারালি ট্রান্সফার অর্থাৎ এক্স্যাক্টলি হোয়াট হোয়াট ফর ওয়ার্ড না এটা একটা সেন্স ফর সেন্স ট্রান্সলেশন উনি বলছেন যে এই জাতীয় যখন ট্রান্সফার ট্রান্সফার করি থ্রি ডিফারেন্ট স্টেজেস এই ট্রান্সফার হয় ওয়েল নাও Now, uh, the two different other kinds of equivalence. So, you see, we are talking about, I mean, everything is all about equivalence. Now, here, two different other equivalence. One is formal and one is dynamic equivalence. Now, on the basis of all this discussion, now, here you see how Nida actually, she has classified into two different uh, equivalence. One is formal, another one is dynamic. I hope that from the name, you can guess what does it mean, formal and dynamic. Now, these are defined by Nida as follows. Formal equivalence is, Formal equivalence focuses attention on the message itself in both form and content. So you see, the equivalence focuses attention on the message itself. The message. What is the message? Form and content. That is the very form. I mean, you can say word by word, word for word. These kinds of translation. You can say this whole concept. So the formal equivalence focuses attention on the message itself, both form and content. Just, just remember the word form, formal, from form and content. So exactly what is the form and what is the content? So they will just follow. 
it will follow this kind of difference. The one is concerned that the message is the receptor language should match as close as possible the different elements in the source language. So you see, one means the translator. So the translation will concern, that he is concerned will be in which way that he will focus on the receptor, I mean the receptor language and also the target, uh, I mean the source, source language. For example, in our case, if we say that, that our source language is English and our target language is uh, Bangla, so in that case, the translator, he will try to, I mean, he will try to um, and exert on this to have the formal equivalence that is very much close to the form of the English and very much close to the form of the content. I mean, English, the, the way actually it meant the content. So that will. Okay, so uh, as you can see that the translation, his concern will be the, the receptor language, that means the target language, and also the source, source language. So he will try to uh, emulate, we can say, the uh, form and content of the, uh, the source language into the target language. So she keep away, target, source language is Jivabe form, also Jivabe content, one of the short story, whatever you say. and and the uh, and form is the structure that you can say. So this form and content she do to you start source text of an English Jamal of the Tik Bangla Hugo Tamil Chist. It was a formal equivalence. Okay. All right. Now the formal equivalence or formal correspondence is thus clearly oriented towards the source, the source text structure. So we'll focus mainly on the source text and structure. That means the English structure, which exerts a strong influence in determining accuracy and correctness. So accuracy and correctness, determining the accuracy and correctness, that means that the translator will try to be as close to the source text while actually he's translating that thing into the target text. Or the Tiri Jakun Unuvat Kurve, Ti Kuru Ingriji from content at the Murukun Kureta accuracy, accuracy of the test of the Bangla, the Akijinish Kurdish Kurdish. Jogi Amra Janiji Bangla, the Ingriji Sinus structure, Yatusta Pata Kurz, eight ball test of the Buddha Pata. The formal equivalence of a genetic ability, it a shedake, a katagazin, it of just very much form. Amra, it a connector, word for word translation, and a form. Most typical of this kind of translation are gloss translations with a close approximation to the source text structure, often with the scholarly footnotes, allowing the students to gain close access to the language and customs of the source culture. So, what the translator will do. We call it gloss translation. So next time when I ask you what is gloss translation, then you will be able to answer it in this way. Gloss translation is the formal equivalence or exactly the formal equivalence in the source the target language. And in this kind of translation, the translator will try to use footnotes. Footnotes means at the end of the, uh, you can see the page. But they cannot put thick page in the footnote there, the star mark there, the top the report. A number for a take, Chotopore de Bajukore, one, two, Erukore, the other. Calculate Nicha the other, the one egg elective of it, or the meaning there, several short explanation there, as a canoe shop. Especially when you read the Shakespearean texts. Puro text group put together, that has a shop to the tonic Puruno, Adunic Pavel shop to the keyboard, or the other, that I'm a put the shoe. Right? Do you get my point? Yes, sir. The food notes at any current key. Or English is on a structure of the book shop here. The canoe is a key mean for a key hooks. Okay, it is a problem. Hold on a second. Okay, now, uh, so as we are saying, that formal equivalence or formal correspondence is thus keenly oriented towards the sentence structure. It is a structure which exerts strong influence in determining accuracy and correctness. So you see the accuracy and correctness. So if you really try to determine the accuracy and correctness, then you can go for the formal equivalence. If you really want to do that, that I will just follow the English structure and then I'll try to put that in the structure, trans, uh, transmit or trans, uh, transfer that in the English structure into Bangla, then you can go for this formal equivalence. Otherwise, we have other alternative that is dynamic equivalence. Now we'll jump to the dynamic equivalence. Now, now here we see the dynamic equivalence or functional equivalence is based on the Nida calls, what Nida calls 
the principle of equivalent effect. The principle of equivalent effect, where the relationship between receptor and matter should be substantial, the same as that which existed between the original receptors and the message. So the original receptor and the message, the way actually it was, the message has to be tailored to the receptor's linguistic, linguistic needs and cultural, uh, cultural expectation. Okay, the cultural expectation. So just here you can see. So the message has to be tailored and receptor. So just focus on these these centers, then you will understand it very easily. You can see the from the very name dynamic. That we will, in the formal equivalence, the focus is on the source text. In the dynamic equivalence, the focus is on the target text. Here, the focus is on, on the source language. Here, the focus is on the target language. I will keep what I'm saying to you. Okay, so, as I'm saying that, the, the difference between the. Sir. Formal equivalence of the dynamic equivalence is that in the formal equivalence, yes, yeah. do you have a question? Please? Anyone? Do you have to ask any questions? Sir, yes, would you repeat it? Okay, obviously, I'll repeat. I'll repeat. In the formal equivalence, what we do, I'm a formal equivalence, who go who, we a target, I'm a source text, which is English, which is a form and formal content, copy code. Bangladesh যখন অনুবাদ করছে ইংরেজিতে কত কাঁচা কাঁচা রাখার চেষ্টা করে তাহলে ফোকাসটা থাকে কোথায় আমার সোর্স টেক্সট ইংরেজি যে টেক্সটটা আছে ওইটার যেটা আছে ওইটাই আমি চেষ্টা করব বাংলাতে ট্রান্সফার করতে আর ডাইনামিক ইকুয়ালেন্স ঠিক উল্টো এই সময় আমি মেসেজটা দিব কোন জায়গা থেকে সোর্স টেক্সটে কথা ইংলিশ থেকে কিন্তু আমার লক্ষ্য থাকবে যে বাংলাতে এই মেসেজটা বাংলার মতো করে কিভাবে দেয়া যায় ইংরেজিতে যেরকম আছে ওরকম করে দেয়াটা আমার উদ্দেশ্য যেহেতু আমার রিডার্স হচ্ছে বেঙ্গলি স্পিকারস so that's why I will try to keep it close to the Bengali culture, tradition, and linguistic needs. I'm a Bangla Jerukum, Tarka Sakasi. The English is the Javon of the Tamun Kuri form and content. I can go to reproduce my chest. I'm a keeper. Yes, sir. Now, here. Two to three good. Was it? formal English the Javon of the Chick Bangla Taiko. It is a share of the content. Sir. Was it clear that in the dynamic equivalence we have to focus on the culture that means culture of the target language, for, for example, Bangla, Bang, Bangali culture, Bangladeshi culture, and also our linguistic uh, features or components we have to focus on in the dynamic equivalence, not the English one. But in the formal equivalence, we have to focus on the English and then we'll try to transmit that English features, English content, English form into Bangla. Uh, you see the leader says a natural this is a key requirement for me so for translation she prefers this dynamic equivalence that the natural it must be natural it must not be like the other things i mean if you go for the formal equivalence it may sound very unnatural because in most cases you will find that the bangla structure and the english structure they don't, uh, they don't match so as a result some kind of bizarre kind of translation that will be produced because of these kind of formal equivalence so we have to uh, Keep some balance between the formal equivalence and the dynamic equivalence because we cannot take that much liberty in the name of dynamic equivalence. Also, we cannot restrain ourselves I mean, in the name of formal equivalence. So we have to make some balance in between. Okay, now, let's jump to the next slide. So here we see. Uh, So, 
the receptor, this receptor oriented approach considers adaptations of grammar of lexicon and cultural references to be essential in order to achieve naturalism. The TT, that is the target text language, should not follow interference from the SL, that is the source language, and the foreignness of the source text setting it setting in minimized uh, setting is minimized in a way that would be criticized by later culturally oriented translation works. Now, here this is the interesting thing. Now he says that how can we actually achieve this? A naturalist can give up achievement, give up a show. Receptor oriented approach. Receptor oriented means I mean G language of Pokemon Koti. Or the Bangla I mean it's English take a translation for what show considers adaptations of grammar of lexicon and of cultural references to be essential in order to achieve naturalness. So you see, you have to consider the lexicon of the Bangla, you have to consider the culture of Bangla, you have to consider the grammar of Bangla language, and these are the essential elements, and you have to consider them if you really want to achieve naturalness in your translation. Is it clear? Is there any confusion? Dear students. Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. And the target text language should not follow interference from the source language. That means source language is English. And target text, that is text in Bangla. So it says that the Bangla text that will not accept the interference from the source language, that is English. That is English as a language that will interfere with its structure and, uh, and form and content that will not be accepted. And that kind of foreignness actually, it is not, it, that for foreignness of that of the source text, that means the English language, that will be minimized, okay? That will be minimized and it must be minimized if you really want to produce a natural translation. Is it, is it clear now? There is interference of the target uh, source, source text or source language, that is English, that will not be accepted and should not be that much interfered or should not be accepted in so much that, the, that we might lose the naturalness of the translation. So that's why he says that the interference of from the source language, that should be minimized. And also the foreignness of the source text, that should be minimized so that we can achieve the naturalness while translating. Okay? Is that okay? Okay, sir. Now, in the next slide, you can see for me that the success of the translation depends above all on achieving equivalent response. It is one of the four basic requirements of the translation, which are, so you see, for neither, this equivalence, this idea of equivalence is the one of the key principles for a good translation. And it is very much important. You can also feel that, that for a good translation, this idea about equivalence is very much important. If you don't have a good idea about equivalence and how to exert it, how to try it, or how to, I mean, uh, use that kind of technique of equivalence I mean, into the target text, from source text into the target text. If you cannot do it properly, then your translation will not be regarded as a good translation. That is very much important to, uh, to uh, I mean, you can say this, I mean, invest your capacity or your technique, or you can see your, uh, your efficiency as a translator. I mean, it's very much important that you know about this equivalence factor. Now, here we see the four basic requirements of a translation. What are those making sense? Obviously, if I translate something from English to Bengali, if it doesn't make any sense, then it's useless. That means you have, a you have translated and that is nothing because it doesn't make any sense. People don't understand it. It doesn't have any meaning. And also the second, second, uh, second uh, requirements of the translation, requirement of translation is that conveying the spirit and manner of the origin. That means the, the original text spirit and manner, it must be there. That is form and content and the spirit, it must be there, obviously. It must be there. That means original text, form and content, we have to use it. But in the name of formal equivalence, we cannot make it too, uh, too insipid. Take a Roshim, but uh, human lesser kind of text is about national the formal equivalence and not. So we must take care of it. But at the same time, we cannot also surrender or we cannot also, I mean, you can say that ignore the importance of formal equivalence at the same time. So that's the spirit and manner of the original. Sense to the book, 
পড়লে যেন বোঝা যায় না ইট মেক সেন্স বুঝতে পারছি বাংলাতে পড়লো ইংলিশ টেক্সট আমরা আমার কালচারের সাথে না বললো আমি অর্থটা ধরতে পারছি বুঝতে পারছি সো এই দুটো জিনিস and what is the third one having a natural and easy form of expression so you see that having a natural and easy form these naturals that we are talking about that is a dynamic so producing a similar response similar response means the response that we have in the time in the source text that is in english we should have the same response or at least very close to that response <coughs> next to that response we must have that response also in the target text that is in bang you understand these four requirements right of translation so next time if you ask you what are the four requirements of translation according to nina then you have to check this okay yes, sir. understood yes sir okay. here is the last slide now here you see now, it is interesting to note the similarity with uh, it, it is interesting to know the similarity with the tightless principle that is now he is talking about the tightless principle we are also we can also find the same kind of principles that is also advised or suggested by tetlers in his uh, in his principles that is suggested previously so the same thing actually we can also find it here in the nidas so here you can see these are the requirements of a translation and you can see the first uh, the second and third conveying the spirit and manner that is the formal equivalence and the third one that is the dynamic equivalence having a natural and easy form of expression so when actually you go for the equivalence Uh, or when you go for the translation, actually, the real translation, as a translation, if you try to work, then you have to consider all these matters that so far we have discussed about equivalence. Uh, otherwise, actually, you cannot prove yourself as a good translator. All right, thank you. That's all for the day. Uh, I hope that you have understood that, and also if you feel the importance of Chomsky's transformative grammar, uh, trans not from transformative, generative grammar, the importance in uh, while explaining translation work, and also how can we use that not translation so that's it from me for now so if you have any question or so you can ask me or if you have any suggestion you can also give us a question so, do you have any question no sir no sir so did you understand it i mean was it understandable for the lecture Yes sir. yes sir okay anyway i'm going to upload the video as usual so if you need further explanation you can call me or you can text me on facebook group or on messenger so no problem if you need any more discussion regarding this um, equivalence then we can also go for it in our initial classes so just let me know okay okay sir okay then thank you very much thanks for your cooperation and it was nice talking to you after a long time Take care of yourself. Thank you, sir. Assalamualaikum, sir.